Hey guys, welcome back. This is the first one since we've been done harvesting. So uh, what me and this big guy right, right there. Hey handsome fella, say hi. Ah. We're heading to, to town to get our hairs cut. So um, what's mommy doing today? Is she playing teacher? <laughs> She's subbing today. So uh, I, get, I get this guy all by myself, but we're heading to town to get our post harvest haircut so we can actually, um, you know, comb our hair once again. Um, if it touches my eyebrows, it bugs the crap out of me. So I'm here in the office today and starting the boring stuff. So I don't know how much of this stuff you guys like to know about, but um, I got to do production for insurance. And so what that means is I got to go through every field and be able to verify all the bushels that we pulled off that field and then submit that to the insurance company and to um, essentially tell them what the yield was on that field so if we have any claims they know what the f the yield was and all that stuff you have to do it anyway whether you have a claim or not but um just to to kind of establish your aph which is basically your average yield and then that's kind of how you identify what field does well you can ensure it at a higher level and that way you're you're kind of guaranteeing yourself that revenue if you ever have a, a claim in the future or if you have a claim now and stuff too. So I'm going through that now. Um, the guy's supposed to come here at noon and uh, we're supposed to go over some of that stuff the agent is. And if we have claims, then we go with an adjuster. Uh, kind of like if you have a hail claim on your house or car or something, you always have your agent who sells you it and kind of holds your hand through the process. And then you have the adjuster who'll come out and actually identify the damage um, and then you kind of work it from there and so that's kind of what I'm doing now it's kind of an important thing the way I do it is I go um, I'll uh, use grit that's why I go that's why I use those grain cart scales and yield monitors and also um, eventually at the end you'll you'll have to verify it totally with scale tickets that you've hauled in or, or wherever you've displaced it because you just can't make up phantom numbers they'll actually if you submit too many claims and they can actually audit you and go back and you actually have to prove that you've hauled them bushels somewhere or you know you've you've uh, fed them to your cattle or or however you got to do it but um there is uh, a checks and balance to that system and so um uh, eventually if you try to work your insurance too much the wrong way it'll catch up with you probably so um we don't like to use insurance if you ever have to i'd rather raise the crop but this year we're going to have some claims probably on some fields just because we had the wind blow over and and some ears fall on the ground and and just it was kind of a mess in some places so that's why this is important and uh it might be boring to a lot of you but it's it's something that that's got to be done and so uh that's what i'm doing today and uh we'll just a lot of office work a lot of preparing stuff for next year and, and going off of that. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now anyway. So what are we doing out here today? Well, this here is a pivot track filler. And the job of this guy is to fill pivot tracks and so uh it's pretty complicated but um the general idea is after you get done with the season you usually have pretty deep pivot tracks on some of these and so when you're doing field work you kind of like to have those level and so that's kind of the job of this guy right here and um, this one's pretty basic um as you can see it just kind of slowly gathers dirt and just kind of will fill that pivot track that'll go down the center what this guy will do here is he'll be the guide for this machine he'll sit right in that pivot track and just kind of keep those centered and this guy kind of levels it up at the end we did use a uh, a pretty sweet one the other day my brother did i'll post a picture of it right here in the cab of the tractor but 
it was a KC or something like that. Um, I'll look it up and uh, put it here, but no, it was pretty nice. It actually would have like a box scraper system in it and uh, you could tilt the, the blades and it was heavy enough and it did a really nice job. Um, we'd like to have one, but uh, since we bought the, the grader thing that pulls behind the tractor, um, we just weren't ready to do that, I guess. Plus we already have a pivot track filler right now. My brother's over the hill. What I got to figure out is where he's actually done stuff and um, I'm gonna go from there and I may need to take out my sway blocks as well. 403 to mobile eight. Yeah, where do I need to fill pivot tracks with this 4250? Okay, like from the pivot to the east where it was corn? Okay, well, I, I wasn't going to do anything where they chop silage either. Where are you at? Oh, I'm down here. Probably, I don't know, it's in this big ditch. It's on the, where they chop silage. Okay. Well, I guess I'll probably have to take the sway blocks out of this thing, huh? That makes it easier. My pickup is sitting up there by the gate. Okay, well, I'll do that and then get started. So what I got to do now is I noticed they didn't take these out when they set this up, but I got to take, these are called sway blocks. And what this does is this is your three point. And uh, so this can kind of track without me having to steer as much and be right on. If I take these out, this will actually kind of move back and more, more, free, more freely. And that will give this area more room to sway back and forth. And so that's why they call them sway blocks. So... Um, or at least that's what we've called them, I guess. So I'm going to take those out. Of course a ratchet wrench wouldn't fit in there. Oh man. It's going to be hard to tell my wife I was just in the office today. We've had that cross disc for years. I think it's been on a 4640, 4840, had an 8440 at one time, a four-wheel drive, that thing was approved. Uh, 8300, that's kind of when we actually were uh, more conventional till. But uh, ever since then, it's just kind of been a, man, cold out there, makes my nose run. Ever since then, uh, we really haven't had the need. We did get that big vertical till. We actually had a land all disc and then we got the vertical till machine after we've traded in the disc. So we call it a vertical till, but it's still kind of like a hybrid disc is what I would call it. So you can go back and look at my old videos. <laughs> kind of show you what we used it for. If you're interested. Well, whoever service this didn't put the screens back on right go learn it that's the way it goes I guess It wasn't me. It wasn't me. I didn't put it back on. It's a dash tractor, so he'll be happy about that. So as I'm going around this outside, these tracks, we've noticed we actually didn't run our pivots a lot this year. Um, so they're not super deep. The only bad places is in where they would go up and down hills and the water would actually cut them out. But where the pivots would actually run normally, there's not that deep. So uh, it's just that guide will kind of act as a depth gauge too back there. And so when you do get deeper ones, it'll kind of let it down more and raise it up. You can adjust that as well manually, physically back there if you just go back there and 
actually uh, just started pulling a crank car track. Now I'm back. So, uh, yeah, I'm not having to do a lot. I just kind of leave it down for those because it'll kind of act as an automatic depth finder, depth, depth finder, depth adjustment. And you just go around in a circle and try to keep it as best over the row as you can. It's a little tacky out. We got that rain yesterday when we went to the haircut. But uh, this stuff doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of got to smooth it on over. Yeah, these aren't deep, really deep at all on this one. It's okay, I guess. It's just really bad in these one spots. So this was kind of a strip through here that had a little bit of work that needed to be done. So I did it a couple times and now I'm kind of driving back over it with my tires. Just kind of create a little pack for it just so it firms it up a little bit more than what this machine can because it's, it's kind of light. We have put weights on it before in the past, but then it kind of tears up the machine, so being the pivot track filler, so no, hopefully we'll call that good on that little strip there. My brother Tom's doing all this bigger stuff with that blade and through the bottoms and whatnot. But I'm gonna go through and catch this little stuff. Get my phone couldn't function without that yeah I'm not sure <clears throat> there wasn't really anything to fill and then when I did come to a spot to fill which little there was it really wouldn't pull much dirt in I don't it's I don't know if the residue is too damp or we don't have enough weight on it <laughs> there wasn't much for tracks over on the west side of the pivot when I was calling a meter so I don't know yeah, I really kind of felt like I wasn't doing anything out there. And then when I'd actually get to maybe a short spot where I could use it, it just didn't do anything. Yeah, basically we just want to make sure we get the ones fixed that are giving us trouble, but I think I got most of them. 